yesterday the CDC changed its um, uh, recommendations rather for testing and said that people who are asymptomatic for COVID may not need to be tested. We this appears to you know it reverses its previous position re recommending that people who are close contacts all be all be tested. Um, so could you perhaps comment please on whether you think that is a, a you know, a wise policy and whether it, uh, you know, goes against, whether it goes against, um, you know, your, your recommendations or whether you have concerns uh, about it, please. Or is the U.S. out of step? Thank you. So thank you, Stephanie. I will, I will begin and, and maybe Mike would like to, to add on this. So, um, WHO has issued guidance on uh, testing strategies um, for how to use testing as part of the control strategy for the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, we've outlined guidance uh, for countries um, that are at different stages of their, their outbreak, whether they have a small number of cases or a large number of cases. Um, and it's up to the countries to adapt that testing strategy to the needs of the country, depending on the capacities that they have, depending on the intensity of transmission that they have. Um, what we've outlined are um, strategies to actively find cases. Um, and so we have recommendations to test suspect cases. Um, and in situations where it is feasible and is possible uh, to expand testing where necessary, to really look for the cases so that they could be isolated um, and that contact tracing can ensue. Um, so there are different types of guidance that WHO has put out on this, um, including the, the normal laboratory guidance that we have. We have additional considerations for uh, different prioritization of testing, depending on your intensity of transmission. Um, and we have investigation guidance. So for the specific example of cluster investigations, testing may need to be expanded to look for individuals who are on the more mild end of the spectrum or who may indeed be asymptomatic. But again, what's really important is that testing is used as an opportunity to find active cases so that they can be isolated and so that contact tracing can uh, also take place where you identify all of the contacts of a known case and that they can be quarantined. And this is really fundamental to breaking chains of transmission. Do I add, Mike, would you, can you go ahead? Uh, no, I think uh, Maria uh, has covered it extremely well. I think uh, the, the primary purpose of testing is to, uh, to confirm whether a suspect case has, uh, has the disease or not, and uh, many countries are focused on that. Uh, and as Maria said, that allows us then to begin the process of contact tracing to those confirmed cases. So it's really important that testing turnaround. It's, it's not necessarily how many tests you do. It is important that the rate of testing is, is, is kept high. But it's also the speed at which those tests are turned around. Getting results back a week or 10 days after the test is done uh, really uh, uh, causes a difficulty because then you can't do effective contact tracing. So the most important part of a testing strategy is to decide who you're going to test, focusing on those uh, suspect cases, and then getting those people tested and getting those results back as quickly as possible and initiating the public health actions, either in terms of uh, isolating or quarantining contacts, carrying out cluster investigations. And as Maria said, in those situations, particularly where there have been a cluster of cases, broader testing of other people who may have been exposed uh, and who may be carrying uh, the disease, may have it asymptomatically or be pre-symptomatic, then there is a rationale for testing those people because you will tend to get a higher return. Uh, but uh, broad-based, population-based testing at this point in most countries is not, uh, is not really that useful. It, it, it absorbs uh, huge amounts of resources. Uh, and you have to have uh, a huge capacity to do testing in order to do that. So we need to focus on testing the right individuals. We need to focus on maximizing the testing within clusters. And we need to focus on the quality of that testing and the speed of turnaround of that testing. And then what happens next? Testing is one thing. Testing is one part of the process. It's what happens when you test, how quick the result comes, how quick the investigation happens, and how quickly you can intervene to shut down chains of transmission. Uh, sometimes we get too focused in on the act of testing itself. It's a vital part of a very important chain of activities that helps us to suppress uh, this virus. Uh, 